Um, I have uh, two apologies to make. Um, and I guess this is a kind of a third apology because I've got a friend here with me. Um, I omitted to say that when we got to sonnet 127, the subject of the sonnet changed from being a male to being female. And I had always thought I would mention that, but then I missed it. Also, sonnets 133, 134, 135, and 136, I just cannot handle. They are so complex with word meanings changing and plays on words. I've struggled and struggled and failed to make sense of them. So I'm not going to pretend that I do make sense of them. I'm just going to leave them unsaid and begin today with sonnet 137. Hmm. Those are upside down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hmm. You see what having a new beautiful friend does to you. Mm -hmm. Makes you put your glasses on upside down. That's not a beautiful one. Okay, here we go. Sonnet 137. Thou blind fool, love, what dost thou to mine eyes that they behold and see not what they see? They know what beauty is, see where it lies, yet what the best is, take the worst to be. If eyes corrupt by over partial looks be anchored in the bay where all men ride, why of eyes falsehood hast thou forged hooks where to the judgment of my heart is tied? Why should my heart think that a several plot, which my heart knows the wide world's commonplace, or mine eyes, seeing this, say this is not, to put fair truth upon so foul a place, to put fair truth upon so foul a face? In things right true, my heart and eyes have erred. And to this fault, <clears throat> in things right true, my heart and eyes have erred. And to this false plague are they now transferred. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do apologize. Are you going to apologize as well, Zoe? By the way, she has a name now. It's Zoe. It's hers. I'm sorry about that. It could have been done better. You have a go. See you tomorrow. <laughs>